here are the three problems that I'll be doing today. They all involve this unfair coin that's weighted so that it favours heads. Okay, so to the first problem, and we're trying to work out the probability that we get exactly two heads in five coin tosses. So I've started by putting here a few possibilities of the way we could get uh, exactly two heads in five coin tosses. So here are two of them. We could get head, head, and then three tails, or we could get head, two tails, a head, and a tail. Uh, and, and then there are others, other possibilities. So let's, just to start with, focus just on the first one, the two heads, and then we get three tails. So the chance of getting the heads is three-fifths, and the chance of getting any of the tails is two-fifths. Now these coin tosses are independent. What happens on one coin toss has no effect on what happens on any of the other coin tosses. And the second thing is that if you express the, the, the probability, you use the word and a lot. So we're looking at the probability of getting a head, and then a head, and then a tail, and then a tail, and then a tail. So these two ideas of independence and this word and mean that we should multiply these probabilities together. So we end up with that the probability of two heads and then three tails is three-fifths squared times two-fifths cubed. Now if we go back to what we had before, we had this other possible way of getting two heads. And if you work it out, you'll see that you get exactly the same answer. Whenever you have two heads and three tails, you're always going to get that answer that I had up, up here, three-fifths squared and times two-fifths cubed. So what we now need to do is work out how many different ways we can get two heads uh, in five coin tosses. So here I've written out all ten of them. Now in a test or exam, you don't want to have to write out all the possibilities. So this is a standard combinatorics type problem. We've got five tosses to choose from and we've got to fill it with two heads. So we need, uh, well, the number of ways of doing that is five choose two or five C two. So we're now ready to answer the question. The required probability is five C two times three fifths squared times two fifths cubed. Okay, so let's go on to the third question, uh, the second question. What's the probability of at most two heads in ten coin tosses? So I've written here the required probability is the probability of zero heads prob plus the probability of one head plus the probability of two heads. So I suppose the question is here, why do we add rather than multiply? So here we're talking about mutually exclusive events. So if you get a zero, if you get zero heads, well then you can't get one head and you can't get two heads. So these are mutually exclusive events. And we tend to use the word or. So we say what's the probability of getting zero heads or one head or two heads? So those two things uh, tell us that we should add the probabilities. So I've worked out the probabilities in the way I did for question one, but now we've got 10 coin tosses and we've, I've worked it out for zero heads, one head and two heads. And I've added them up and if you want, you can express the answer in decimal form to as many decimal places as you want, which I've done there. Okay, so on to the third question. So what's the probability that we get more than one head in 10 coin tosses. So if we're going to do this the way we did the question two, we just say, well, the required probability is the probability of two heads plus the probability of three heads plus the probability of getting four heads plus all the way up to the probability of 10 heads. Now that's quite a lot to work out with all the fractions and the binomial coefficients. And if you need to work it out in decimal form at the end, that's even more work. So there's a shortcut that you should keep in mind which will help you. And that is that we can say that basically the probability of getting more than one head is one 
minus the probability of getting no heads or getting one head. So it's one minus the probability of zero heads minus the probability of one head. And so you can see there that we only need to have uh, two sort of calculations which we subtract from one rather than the other way we would have to work out what is it eight or nine different sets of calculations. So this is much quicker particularly if you have to express it in decimal form at the end. So that's it for binomial distributions made easy. I hope you found it useful.